Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to the One Bitcoin Show. Today is July the 19th, 2020. Strong hand, long term thinking. Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. Conviction, compete, don't complain. Be a unique beast, relentless. You're home for Bitcoin insider information. I am offended by selling. All right. Hello, my elite friends. How you doing? If you have questions, I have answers. Type in Bitcoin Meister or do a super chat. If you have a question, we definitely will have time. Check out all the links below, especially yesterday's Beyond Bitcoin show, which is only on the backup channel. Subscribe to the backup channel. That is linked to below. Also, watch Saturday's show. I was talking about all sorts of controversial topics that can only be talked about on the backup channel, on the Beyond Bitcoin show. This week in Bitcoin was on Friday. We had, and again, you can watch it at techbalt.com disruptmeister.com. Come on, people. Actually check out those links. I know a lot of you don't. You just like mindlessly drool and, and watch the video. And uh, well, we're going to talk about that in a second. But I mean, that that's, don't be an algorithm servant. Just don't follow. Don't tell. Don't click on what the algorithm tells you to do your own research. Look in what the YouTube creators provide for you. I mean, this is I'm not, I'm not just providing those links for decoration down there. This is part of the show. It's part of the learning experience. And if you're not learning, well, then you end up just being a weak hand and you sell your Bitcoin is disgraceful and you're not pounding that like button. But uh, Fridays this week in Bitcoin, uh, Brandon was on uh, from Bitcoin Magazine. And uh, no, he's not from Bitcoin. Where's Brandon from? Whatever Brandon's from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, they're, 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 for putting on the event in, in, in Los Angeles. That's, that's Bitcoin Magazine, isn't it? Yeah. So, and then we have, uh, who else was on the show? I just got thrown off by that. Federico in Italy and John Ballas was one. But I want to say something that Brandon brought up about Taproot. That is, if you're going to gain one bit of knowledge from the This Week in Bitcoin, fast forward till the to the very end when Brandon uh, starts to talk about Taproot. And he says, that is the next big uh, conversation in Bitcoin. It's the next SegWit conversation. So you can be sure uh, in this uh, second half of the year, you're going to be you're going to be hearing about it. I'm sure people will be yelling back and forth on social media, controversial uh, people making a complex uh, technical videos about it. And that gets into complexity worship. All right. Now, I can just sum up Taproot like this. OK, it's, it's going to be a big deal, big arguments. And uh, it might improve uh, Bitcoin scaling and privacy. That's that's where the, the argument is going to come. OK, I can't tell you about every little technical feature of it. Uh, and uh, and does it really matter every little technical feature of it for every person that's out there who, who values their wealth in Bitcoin? Seriously, do you need to watch hour long videos about the specific technical uh the, the, the tap root and, and what, what else is tap root paired with? Uh, what's what's I, I forgot the name of the, uh, the the other improvement that it's uh, it's paired with. Well, anyway, and, and so you, you need to I think you need to know what it brings to the table, but not every technical aspect of it. You now, if you if you've got a technical mind, maybe that's entertaining. But there's so many people out there. They'll be like, oh, man, that 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 video was just so great. And, and I'm like, well, what was it about? They can't even tell you what it was about. It's blind complexity worship. And there is so much of that in the, uh, in the Bitcoin space or in the, in the, in the overall cryptocurrency space too. Uh, you know, some of these altcoiners will present uh, you know, technical-based uh, videos of why uh, their, uh, their coin is better than Bitcoin, although we all know that Bitcoin is next Bitcoin, pound that like button. But uh, and it's got all these long words, all these technical complexities, programming language nonsense. And to them, it's not nonsense. But to there, they're just, oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. But it's blind complexity worship. And it's not, I, I mean, hey, I try to help people manage their time more efficiently. That's what a Saturday show, that's what, you know, some of the advice that I give. And I always tell people, you avoid the clickbait stories. I mean, today on, on Cointelegraph, and clickbait stories, by the way, are, are worse. Th that, that's, that's, that's worse than, uh, than complexity worship, okay? Because at least it if you actually read an article that's uh, 
that you don't exactly under, I mean, you know, you're, you're learning new terms, at least you might have a new term might jump into your head. When you read a freaking clickbait article about uh, some guy saying he's going to eat his uh, private parts, and, and and that's what the, the article in Cointelegraph was about, John McCarthy today, it, it, it talking about the, 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 the private parts again. And how many times do you have to hear about it? It's nonsense. He wants attention. You failed if you if you read that. You wasted your time. I just saw the headline. I'm like, again? Again? People are going to probably ask me about his private parts again. And, and, and 500,000 and then a million Bitcoin. Come on, dudes. Uh, so when you when you waste your time on that, you actually maybe your IQ goes down. I know that no, it doesn't go down, but it's a you learn nothing. It's 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 the, it's the complete opposite. So I, I got the complexity. I've I've expressed this complexity worship before, and I got the term from Yaron Brook, uh, and it's it's something you should catch yourself with because uh, if you're just uh, if you're trying to argue a point and you kind of defer to someone else uh, to an article that you don't even understand what it's about. That's 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 complexity worship right there because you're putting someone on a pedestal because they're saying something that you don't understand and you're just assuming that it's right and you're assuming that it's incredibly knowledgeable and uh, no it, that's that don't blindly uh, worship things that sound complicated okay or worship people that sound complicated uh, half these articles that get sent to me I'm just I'm like do people even understand what they're sending me here. Like, this is so great. Well, why is it so great? Can, can, that, that's a way to bust on a uh, complexity worship right there. Did you really read it? Did you really read it? All right. So uh, something that happened 10 years ago today, uh, and it, it goes way beyond Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. It's the complexity. That's what I mentioned on yesterday's show too. So you can apply it to so many a aspects of, of your life, the blind uh, complexity worship. Now, Today, 10 years ago today, the first Bitcoin trade on Mt. Gox swapped 20 Bitcoin uh, for 99 cents at a price of 5 cents per coin. That's 10 years. I mean, it might have been yesterday now. Uh, depend, this is a, a tweet from Clark Moody. So for all you impatient people, uh, you can see you stick around for 10 years. Uh, what can happen? Now, of course, I wasn't I, I wasn't buying up Mt. Gox. But it, it also shows, hey, it's. Bitcoin has been traded now for a decade, a decade. We, we reached uh, Bitcoin has reached a milestone uh, and it is it's pretty funny when you look back five cents. Uh, and uh, I wonder what happened to that person who bought 20 that day. If they had a, if they actually had a strong hand and were like, or were like uh, most people today and like, ooh, it's now it's 10 cents. Better, better sell it. Better sell my 20. Going to uh, going to make my dollar here. <laughs> But yeah, dude, that 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 puts it in perspective. Here, I got a garlic I'm playing with here. Don't keep the garlic close to you. Okay, let me see if there are questions over here. Someone says tap root. Let's go. All right, yeah, you better believe it. Tap root. Hey, hey, let let I'm letting the technical people deal with it. I'm just giving you a little bit of a preview. And if it's anything like Segwit, <laughs> who knows? Maybe someone will fork off uh, anti tap root Bitcoin or something. Uh, yeah, that, that would be great. Hey, let let compete. Don't complain. If people don't like it, let let them argue. Uh, let them argue against it. And if they if they if Bitcoin uh if it gets added in there, the the tap root uh, improvement. What is the other? What's the, what's the improvement that's uh, paired with tap root? Why can't I think of that name right now? Tap root. I'm gonna have to look it up. That's bothering me. Snore. Snore signatures. Okay. Yeah. When when they're added, if people spaz out and hate it, let them create their own. Uh, uh, let them uh, create their crypto dividend in Bitcoin. The the anti uh, the anti tap Bitcoin. Go ahead. We, we need we need some new crypto dividends here. We need uh, people that get that frustrated and think they have the next Bitcoin. It's it's, it's good. I, I, I hey any in any family there are always going to be arguments <laughs> and that's the great thing about bitcoin when a family has an argument and somebody runs away uh the original family gets wealthier pound that like button okay now it's a unique you get the insider information here people don't talk about the still to this very day people don't talk about how you just hold on to that beautiful bitcoin instead of trading it on mount gox for a dollar profit you eventually you get these uh, crypto dividends, which is interest on your freaking Bitcoin, baby. Live it, love it, Bitcoin. All right, now moving on. Uh, we talked about the. Uh, here's another. Uh, actually, 
early stage venture firm which invests in startups building in the public blockchain sector. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to say what, what's that that's exactly describing this specific company, but I, I saw that description of a company, early stage venture firm which invests in startups building in the blockchain public blockchain sector. For me, that's that's complexity right there. Unnecessary complexity. And people worship that type of complexity too. Why not just buy the real thing instead of building uh, on top of something that is similar to it, okay? Why not just buy Bitcoin? And, but this is where the big boys play. So such you know, if people want to complicate matters, that's life. And maybe they'll get some winners out of that. But basically what that what, what's that saying, that saying is, hey, there's Bitcoin. Then – they're altcoins. Then they're people who build things on top of those altcoins, and we invest in them. And uh, I, okay, you can invest in altcoin businesses, and then write tremendous theses on uh, theses on <laughs> on how uh, how great your uh, company is, what it's going to do, et cetera, et cetera. And then some people they don't even understand. They don't understand it, but it sounds cool. It sounds real cool. Ooh, this company is going to innovate on uh, on Litecoin. Wow, that's that's complex. It's worship. It's it's blind complexity worship. Complexity for that's complexity for the sake of complexity, right there. Stick with the real thing, Bitcoin. I and again, that doesn't get you the uh, the attention. It doesn't saying buy and hold Bitcoin. It really doesn't get you attention. Making some complex. Uh, altcoin related company uh, that deals with DeFi. <laughs> that's a that's a flavor of the month type of topic there, and then no one can understand what you're even talking about. That and, and people people are more likely to buy it when they're not uh, when they're uh, in this space at least because there's such complexity worship. If if the masses don't understand exactly what you're talking about, uh, I think in this space they're more likely to buy it. It, it than, than if they actually understood what you were talking about. And that is complexity of worship. Now, uh, now let's talk about crypto dollars real quick. And lots people uh, noticed on the backup channel, I uh, reposted a video from a long time ago, 2017, who's who in Bitcoin. And people asked me, well, let's do, a, do another who's who in the space, Adam. List all the people... Uh, that you think are important or that you follow on Twitter or, or, or that you read, do it again. Well, I don't know if I'm going to do a whole video about it, but every once in a while I'm going to talk about people. And I've done this before. If you pay attention, if you actually have listening comprehension, you, well, I mean, if you watch the This Week in Bitcoin show, those are people that I pay attention to, the rotation of guests that I have there. But I, I can get a little bit more in depth. So Nick Carter is like, I had Nick Carter on the show back uh, before everybody knew who he was in uh, this summer of 2017. So we're talking about almost three years ago now. It was in September or, or, or August. Uh, I think he was on once or twice. I can't remember now. Uh, and amazingly, he was on with Ego Coin guy. <laughs> little little did I know how uh, that dude would devolve. But Nick Carter has only gotten better. He, he's, he's, he's a young guy. And uh, he's only one weakness. You know, some of these guys I had to drop uh, following because they panicked so much about the virus. So many dudes just panicked and they're still in panic mode. And that that doesn't give off a good uh, vibe to me because I don't – when they say they're strong hands yet they panic with uh, with the virus, well, they're demonstrating that they're panickers. So wh wh why why would I – why should I believe they actually hold Bitcoin, that they didn't panic uh, all the times that it's dropped? So actually – but I do – initially, you know, you can give some people some leeway. Uh, at the very start, and Nick Carter had some really cryptic uh, virus-related uh, tweet back in the day. It was disturbing on a certain level, but he's never talked about it again, so no worry about that. That Don't worry about that. He's got a strong hand. Now, I mean, there's a, there's a certain guy uh, from uh, – I, I don't want to bust. I don't want to be – there's a certain guy from another country who straight up admitted – I mean, he's, he's a huge panic guy. I haven't had him on the show for quite some time because he's a, he panicked because of the virus. But he even admitted that he he sold that he often sells his big. He doesn't have a strong. He doesn't. But it, it goes hand in hand. Weak hands and uh, panicking uh, over current events. It, uh, there's a big there's a big overlap there. There's there's a tremendous overlap there. But going back to the point, Nick Carter has 
so smart. Excellent article about this crypto dollar thing out there. I read the whole darn article, the crypto dollars article, and I really came away more knowledgeable in terms of uh, the entire space. So it says, indeed, the supply of crypto dollars has already outstripped numerous countries when it comes to an active monetary base. Think about that. When, when thought of as an individual nation, crypto dollars currently boast a broad monetary base, a broader monetary base than that of 72 countries. Okay. <laughs> that is, that is impressive. And it's, it's not Bitcoin, stable coins, crypto dollars, whatever you want to call. They're not, but clearly this is a big thing. We, we need to keep our eye on, everyone needs to keep their eye on this because this is going to change the worldwide financial ecosystem and it will help Bitcoin. Okay. And it will get Bitcoin's name out there and get more people away from the 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 system that relies on, on banks, okay, and central banks. Uh, and in Zimbabwe, let me tell you, there is no excuse. They're having bad inflation there again. And if they had a way to get onto these crypto dollars, there's no excuse for them not to get onto them, okay? Because uh, it it is a complete way to get rid to to – once you're on the crypto dollar rails, okay, no more capital controls, okay? You are not stuck using your worthless freaking Zimbabwe dollar or whatever the, whatever they call it there, okay? And this this happens uh, in so many so many uh, developing countries. Once users are onboarded into crypto fine into the crypto financial infrastructure, the crypto dollar, and it is difficult for the state to impose capital controls on them without taking extremely onerous measures. And right now, these, these crypto dollars, most of them are backed up or supposedly backed up by real dollars in the bank. Okay. That's the collateral that's backing them up. And many people are buying into that story and using them for all sorts of reasons. It shows you that the dollar is worshipped all, and that the dollar is not going anywhere. But, and this is a big but, certain certain entities are backing up their crypto dollar creations with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the collateral, and I think that is great. I think that's great. Instead of relying on dollar based bank accounts, okay, to create your uh, crypto dollars from, saying okay, I'm, I'm creating a hundred thousand crypto dollars because I have a hundred thousand. Uh, dollars in the bank, and we're gonna we're gonna distribute them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, no, do, do have have uh, have a hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin in the bank, and create uh, fifty thousand dollars worth of crypto dollars. Okay, that it, and if more and more of these crypto dollar creators out there use Bitcoin as a collateral, it will tie up more and more Bitcoin, and that is good. That that is good uh, for Bitcoin. Okay. Keeping it, keeping it in in very strong hands at that point because they got to keep it. They they have to have proof of reserves to show that these crypto dollars they issued are actually worth something. So they got to ha ha have the Bitcoin there. So th that is a good thing. And read the entire read the entire piece. Uh, there's some fancy sets and graphics there too. I I I, I really enjoyed uh, the, those three points that I that I just shared. And so Nick. Nick is a great Twitter person to follow. Follow him. That that uh, crypto do crypto dollars are an interesting uh, creation that will help Bitcoin, and it, they will really. And I've said this before. They're going to destroy some of these. If the people in these developing countries can actually, and this is a big if, uh, get away from blindly being part of their uh, fiat currency system. It will destroy some of these uh, developing world uh, fiat currencies because they will want to have something that is the dollar, just as good as the dollar. These these crypto dollars are just as good as the dollar. They're easier to get uh, than the dollar, and your country can't stop, uh, it can't impose capital controls on you uh, like, like Zimbabwe can uh, in, in terms of uh, get, getting the dollar in and out of the country, as I saw firsthand in, uh, in Zimbabwe. So I'm watching uh, Ben Shapiro. On uh, Friday, I believe it was, and he's got an advertisement for something called Our Crowd. Our Crowd, a better way to invest in startups. Okay, for first of all, Bitcoin is my startup. Pound that like button, and I've been saying that. You can check out the, the archives from uh, 2015 
when I said it was like a Facebook uh, pre-IPO, okay? Uh, so yeah, I got I, I invested in this startup a long time ago. I don't need to gamble on our crowd, but our crowd pitches itself as a way to get in on startups early. It, it, and so Ben Shapiro, uh, I, since it was an advertisement, I, I started looking over at my food and putting some food in my mouth because I eat, I do two things at once. And I hear him say, get in early on Ripple at our crowd. I'm like, Ripple? What the heck? Well, what's going on here? But oh no, it's Ripple Foods. Ripple. Now this has nothing to do with Ripple, but some people call Ripple Foods Ripple. A lot, in fact. And uh, I just want to point that out to you, that some people might get get excited and think, oh, because Ripple is a, is a company also. Uh, but the Ripple that we know about is doesn't deal with food. They deal with some centralized cryptocurrency or something like that. I don't, I don't know exactly what they do. Uh, but so, so, so be careful about that. Uh, it, it might, you know, it might help uh, our crowd. And some people might think, oh, wait a second, I, I'll get into this our crowd thing because they're going to give me inside information, inside ways to get special Ripple before Ripple goes IPO. That, that's, that, that's the impression you might get from this advertisement, that there's some company out there called Ripple that's eventually going to go IPO. Oh, it's, it's the, it's the uh, cryptocurrency company Ripple. I'll get in with our crowd and I'll be able to get in before it gets uh, IPO on their stocks. Not re- you know, instead of, instead of buying regular XRP, I'll get their special. No, it's just, it's ripple foods. Okay. Be, be careful. I'm sure someone will create some uh, fabrication around all this confusion. If you want to look up ripple foods, I link to it below. By the way, thank you very much for the person who sent me Bitcoin the other day. That was, that was very, very generous of you. Uh, you are, uh, I think you're listening on, on the podcast right now. What, one final thing uh, about current events. I've said this before. I want to say it again. Bitcoin is the guilt, shame, privilege buster. All right. All these people shouting privilege at you, shouting sh- you should be ashamed of success. You should be guilty about success. When you hold Bitcoin, you should just be straight up out there saying, I got in on this. I am proud of this right now. You can be a proud person also. Bitcoin pride, it, you don't have to work. It can't be taken away from you. You truly, if you truly are in the Bitcoin overlay or even getting toward there, okay, if you if you have that mindset uh, and understand Bitcoin and understand that uh, you can send it anywhere in the world, there are no restrictions on it. It does not worship the government any in any way. It has nothing to do with the government in any way. And today, so many people want you to... Do you think the government's going to solve all their problems? Uh, it's it's the ultimate in personal responsibility. That's stuff you should be proud of. Pers- I took personal responsibility. I am part of this counterculture. This is not the, the way that the, the masses are behaving today. I am not a part of that at all. I am proud of that. And if they want to scream guilt and they want to and they want to drown themselves in guilt and shame and and thinking they have some privilege. Let them do that. I will laugh upon them because Bitcoin is – it's the buster of all those things, okay? If someone ever tries to, to, to put guilt or shame or privilege on you, just say, yeah, I'm, I've got Bitcoin and I'm proud of it. So what? what what's wrong with being proud of uh, my accomplishments? What's wrong with being proud of being in motion, all right? So that that's, that's the Bitcoin world, in motion, all right? Pride. Bring it, bring it back. All right. Production. We have we have lost. Most people have lost touch with that. So this is if you ever try to convince someone to get into Bitcoin, there's a completely different take on how to do so. Just say, hey, dude, are you tired of of just the how everybody's guilted today? Everybody guilt and shame are just thrown in your face. If if you truly are into this Bitcoin thing, you just laugh at that stuff. It, It is the the shame buster. Pound that like button. Everyone, new show every day. The great uh, Jim says, stay consistent, stack at a rate you can sustain. He sent $4.99 in the super chat. Thank you very much. And, of course, uh, check out Bit Piggies. Bit, Bit Piggies, that's a great uh, company that uh, helps te- teach the youth uh, to treat uh, the gives them a Bitcoin piggy bank. Bit Piggies, look it up. Uh can we have a pride parade too, says Doug? Yes. Yes. There should be a Bitcoin pride parade. Yes. In, in San Francisco, 
hopefully there will be a great Bitcoin. Right now, there should be a Bitcoin. This would be the perfect time to have a Bitcoin pride parade in San Francisco when they're all locked down saying, we don't believe in this nonsense. We're taking it to the streets. You get into this Bitcoin thing. You will be proud and you won't be worshiping the freaking government and following their edicts and hiding in your your house, which is now going down in value because of all uh, the government uh, induced uh, restrictions that have been put on the city of San Francisco, on Silicon Valley, uh, San Jose, Santa Clara, Oakland, whatever the nonsense that's going on in California today. So yes, there should be a big a Bitcoin pride parade this very day in San Francisco. I would participate in it right now. Okay, and uh, that's it. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, uh, the the Disrupt Meister. Remember to subscribe to this channel, like this video, pound that like button. New show every day. Please follow me on Twitter, T-E-C-H-B-A-L-T. I'll say hi to you dudes in the chat. Bye-bye.